All right, hello. Let's see how this goes. Uh, <laughs> so, um, in the post that uh, you got this video from on Classroom, there should be a link to a Google Form. Uh, well, there's actually two Google Forms, but open up the first one. It should be something like uh, just, you know, 317 lesson. Uh, so open that one up and uh, you should have uh, multiple choice thing, choose what period you're in, and then write your name below that. And this is just so for your submissions, uh, I know, you know, who's doing what, and I can keep some track of everything. Uh, just see who's doing a thing. Okay, so, um, we're starting, as I said this before, you know, all this happened. Uh, we're starting a new unit, and this unit is, unfortunately, the one that most people would say is the hardest one. Uh, so we'll do our best in this kind of manner. Um, all right, so starting off though, things are gonna start off pretty easy today. Uh, we're just gonna start the basics off with electric charge. Now before that though, uh, you do have a warm up question and you can see it in the form, but I'll write it up anyway. Your warm up question is simply what is electricity? Very open ended question. Um, as with all warm ups, uh, I you know don't expect you to necessarily have the perfect answer at the top of your head. Just want to see what you can come up with for this here. So don't feel like you have to Google it or write something down. Just pause this for a little bit, think about it, and uh, write something in that you think makes sense. And then once you have something written down, then you can unpause and come back and we'll go into what you think about this. So what is electricity? Give you a few minutes to think about it. Write something down. Okay, so... Again, there's a lot of ways you can talk about electricity, um, of course, of how it's used, um, both by humans and also in terms of nature, like lightning bolts or something. Um, but what I would say as sort of a fundamental definition of electricity is just, it's an interaction, right? You have some sort of interaction between things. So it's an interaction uh, between charged particles. That's sort of the super basic way of describing it. Of course, there's a lot of different ways that can come about, depending on what you're actually trying to do with it. Um, but this is sort of the super basic way of describing it. And the key there is, is charge, okay? Charge is the key. So with charge, you're say, basically saying, okay, here's some, here's some interaction, here's a thing that can happen, but it requires charge in order to do so. And so that's kind of what we're getting at today is sort of just what is charge? How can you describe it both qualitatively and quantitatively? So, we of course have an idea about how charge is just based on what you talked about before. You know, when we talk about like, um, when we talk about protons and electrons, of course you talk about the charges of them. And like, for example, we know that protons have a positive charge, uh, electrons have a negative charge, and also neutrons have no charge. Okay, so you, you've all heard this in this sense before, that's nothing new. So the question then is like, okay, we have this sort of sense of positive and negative, okay? It's some property that can be positive, it's a property that could be negative, or it just could not be there, it could be zero. Um, but what's the actual specifics about this? Because this is still pretty a vague statement, like, oh, positive, negative, okay, so what, right? So here's how I like to think about this, and also how we can get numbers from this that makes a little bit more sense. So think back to gravity for a second. When we talked about gravity, you know, we had the universal gravitational constant, uh, the formula from that where you had you know like g and then you had m1 m2 divided by r squared you know that kind of formula we that we messed up before so the key for that is you have that's still that's also an interaction between two objects right you have two objects there's an interaction between them and they're separate you know you don't need to have a thing connecting them for gravity to work and so the key is okay what is the actual property of those objects that determines that connection right what is it about like the earth and the moon that actually means that there is gravity between them it's the mass right the mass is what causes gravity to be a thing two objects have mass therefore there's an interaction between them so charge is the exact same kind of thing but now for electricity you have two objects they're not connected to each other but they interact with each other because they both have charge so I like to think of, so just how mass is sort of like, here is a thing, it has a property, that property is mass. Here, I like to think, here's a thing, its property is charge, and from the charge it does electricity stuff. So you can think of it as charge is a fundamental property 
of particles in a sense. And you can have just to like, for example, protons and neutrons and electrons and all the, also all the quarks and all the other stuff we talked about, those all have a certain mass, right? Protons have a mass of, uh, what is it? 1.67 times 10 to the 27 kilograms, I think. Um, that is an innate property of a proton. Protons also have uh, an innate charge to them. So, um, so let me kind of, so then it gets the question, okay, but what do we measure charge as? Reagan mass we measured as kilograms. Um, now, but remember for the atomic stuff, we talked about this, we had kind of a new unit of mass, the atomic mass unit. And the atomic mass unit was helpful because it sort of let us scale. Okay, you know, talking about uh, the mass of like a carbon atom is annoying if you're just talking about kilograms, it's much easier to say, oh, it's 12 atomic mass units. So similarly, for the proton, electron, and the neutron, oftentimes you might see, oh, the charge of a proton is plus one, the charge of an electron is minus one, and the charge of a neutron is zero. Okay, you've probably seen some sort of kind of description of that, um, how it's referred to in that way. Now, these numbers here, the plus one, minus one, and zero, that's kind of an atomic mass unit scale for charge. It's often just called like atomic charge, or I think it's often actually normally called electron charge, um, where basically you're defining that the charge of an electron is minus one. So again, sort of like how we define the atomic mass unit as, uh, well, a 12th of carbon 12. So you have electron charge, which is defined as, whoops, as when the charge of an electron equals minus one. So that's just clarifying that. That's just links in with that and up to here that that's how that works. So we see that here because of those there. Okay. But that's not, you know, the standard unit, right? Atomic mass unit is not the standard unit of mass. That's the kilogram. So we need a standard unit of charge. Uh, and so for this, you probably don't know of one off the top of your head, but the standard unit of charge is the Coulomb. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm sure it's named after someone, but whatever. Uh, so the Coulomb is the unit of charge. If you're talking about how much charge something has, it's, it's this, it's, you know, X amount of Coulombs. Just to, like you've talked about how much mass something has, you say it's X amount of kilograms. Same exact kind of thing. It's just, instead of measuring mass, it's measuring charge. Now the difference, so of course the difference here is that the Coulomb can be positive or negative. Right? You can't have negative kilograms, but you can have negative coulombs. So, the, so again, it's very, very similar. Right, It's very, very similar to mass, just how like mass affects gravity, charge affects electricity. That's really all there is to think about in that sense. Because sometimes people get tripped up about like what exactly this is and kind of how this works and, oh, what's this grand scheme? It's not really that complicated. It's just the sense that you have charge determining electricity versus mass determining gravity. And that charge can be positive, zero or negative, whereas mass can just be positive or zero, right? Like for example, light has zero mass, right? Um, and so that's how this works here. So the standard unit of charge is the Coulomb. Now, one Coulomb of charge uh, is really big, actually, is a lot of charge. Okay, it's a lot of charge. Um, so like one kilogram, not that much, right? You know, you lift a kilogram, you know, I don't know. It's probably, I, well, you remember I passed around that weight at the beginning of the year saying, here's a kilogram, right? And here I have a glass of water near me. It's probably about a kilogram right now. So, um, but one Coulomb is like a ridiculous amount of charge. Like it's just a ton. Okay. So you're almost never going to have a situation where something has a Coulomb of charge. It's a ridiculous number. Um, it's sort of like saying, oh, yeah, here's my son, and he has a mass of a ton. It's like, what? It, it doesn't work, right? So you, you need, it, it's, and if I think, well, if, if that's the scaling, it's so off, then why do we even use it? Um, the Coulomb actually comes from another unit, which we'll talk about later. So the Coulomb, actually, you think, oh, Coulomb charge, that's, like, really fundamental. But it didn't actually come first when they were figuring this stuff out in, like, the 1800s. Um, so the Coulomb is based off of another unit, which, again, we'll talk about later. Um that unit makes more sense 
based on its scaling, but unfortunately the Coulomb scaling from that just doesn't work as well. And again, I'll explain this as once we get into the other unit, which will probably be next week. Um, so just keep in mind, for example, uh, if you look at the wrap-up question, it talks about uh, micro Coulombs. Okay, remember the the mu symbol there is for micro, so a micro Coulomb is, you know, remember 10, whoops, 10 to the minus 6 Coulombs. Oh, yeah, so in addition to the fact the standard unit is the Coulomb, it's, in terms of a unit, uh, it's just a capital C like that. So it kind of looks like, you know, degrees Celsius, just without the degree symbol. So it's just capital C, uh, that's your Coulomb. So one, so oftentimes charges are going to be microcoulombs or sometimes nanocoulombs, which is 10 to the minus 9. Um, and you may have, you know, maybe millicoulombs with like something that has a lot of charge. Um, but yeah, most of these, it's going to have, you know, micro and nano are kind of the standards for charge in that sense. So you might be wondering, okay, then what actually is the charge of the proton and the electron in coulombs? Uh, well, it's, as you may guess, it's a pretty small number because, you know, again, talking about subatomic particles here. Um, but it actually, because you remember, again, mass for protons and electrons, it was like minus 27 for the protons, 10 to the minus 31 for the electrons. So it's not quite that small of a number. But anyway, so I have space. Now let's go to the next page. Okay. So um, the proton charge oops, in Coulombs is. And this is abbreviated, but it, you know it's pretty close. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so that again, it's rounded, but it works. It works well for we're going. So charge of a proton is that many coulombs. So again, small amount, but it's what we have. You know, it's what we got going here for us. So now for the electron, it is exactly the same but negative. And so that's important. So remember how, like, for example, when we talked about the atomic mass stuff for protons and neutrons, I was very specific in saying that, look, protons and neutrons are very close in mass. If you're dealing with chemistry stuff there, usually you can just kind of say they're the same, not a big deal, uh, but they are, they are different. And that difference does matter, especially if you're talking about nuclear processes. For here, it's the opposite. The proton charge and the electron charge are the same, just one's positive, one's negative. Okay, they are the same, perfectly the same. It's not a rounding thing that they look the same. They are literally the same. Um, again, there are other numbers past this because I am rounding these numbers, but if I did not round these numbers, they are the same number. So that's something to keep in mind. That makes sense, right? If the protons and electrons within, in an atom did not have the same charge, even if they were off by like, you know, a billionth of a percent, it would completely change like everything we know about atoms and how they would work, and it would just destroy everything. So <laughs> it's very important um, that they are exactly the same, and so it works in that sense uh, really well. And oh, also this does mean that a neutron charge in Coulombs is exactly, can't type, exactly zero. Okay, so that's also not a rounding thing either. It is exactly zero. So that's helpful in that sense there. Um, so these are sort of like kind of the fundamental building blocks for how electricity works. It's based off of the it's based off of the Coulomb, the charge, and kind of what comes from there. So for now, just I kind of want to introduce this concept of Coulombs in terms of charge. It's pretty basic. Again, it's just dealing with um you have this new property that you're measuring, you know, could be positive, negative, and it will be used to uh deal with electricity going forward. So you can see a lot of kind of how this is coming into play. So um, let's actually do, let's already kind of jump into the wrap up question. So I know this is very quick. Um, today's quick, tomorrow will definitely be going more in depth about how this works, but I wanna also kind of walk you through this just to make sure we're on the same page. You can probably know what I'm gonna go into for this, but just to make sure. So the wrap up question, I have you trying to figure out, okay, here's an object. I don't have the screen up of it. Uh, I don't have the exact page right in front of me, so I'm going to paraphrase this somewhat. But it was um, there's an object with a charge of plus 10 microcoulombs. How many more protons does it have than electrons? Right? So, the way you do this is that. So, I'll give you a little. Um, 
see if you can think about how to get for this. Again, you have the charge of the thing, plus 10 microcoulombs, and you have the charge of one proton right here. So you then figure out how many protons, more protons is needed than electrons to have that charge. Because obviously if you had the same number of protons and electrons, well then you would just have a charge of zero. So again, pause this, think about it, uh, work out the math, show show your work on the uh, the Google form, just so I can kind of see what you're doing. Again, I know it's kind of janky to type in the numbers and the thing, but just do your best. Um, you know, use the, uh, use this thing for, you know, exponents or whatever. So if you have like, oh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, you know, that's, that's fine. Just writing that in there. I'm doing the shortcut on word, which helps, uh, but to superscript it and subscript it and stuff, but you know, can't really do that in form. So just think about it. Uh, so you can come up with an answer and again, pause this, come up with an answer, write some stuff in, and then I'll show you how to actually get the answer. Just make sure we're on the same page for this. Okay, so um, the main thing here is that we have, okay, here's the charge that we have, and we know that one proton is this charge, so then we need to figure out, okay, how many protons do you need? Well, enough to end up adding up to this charge. So just because this here is in scientific notation, I'm going to put this in scientific notation just to make things the same. So it's uh, microcoulomb, so it's 10 times 10 to the minus 6. Because that's... Uh, that's what a microcoulomb is, minus 6. So 10 times 10 to the minus 6, this 10 ends up multiplying, this becomes 10 to the minus 5, right? Oops. Because if it was if it was just a microcoulomb, one microcoulomb, then it would be 10 to the minus 6, but because it's 10 microcoulombs, it's 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so we have a charge of 10 to the minus 5, that is the charge of the whole thing, and the charge per one proton is this number up here. So to find out how many protons you need to make this. Sort of like how we did this for the, um, again, going back to the atomic fusion stuff, where you found the mass difference, plugged that in equals mc squared, you got an energy. But then the question would be like, oh, how many, you know, if you had a kilogram of the stuff, how many, how much total energy would you have, right? And you found sort of a number of uh, atoms in the kilogram kind of doing, it's, it's similar to that, right? Because you would be then saying, okay, here's my total charge. And I'm going to divide it by just, well, the charge of one proton. Get that going there. Um, so, and it's not the prettiest way to look at this on, you know, Word. I mean, I could edit in a function thing, but I'm, that takes too, too long and I don't care. So, <laughs> uh, you can follow this. It should be fine. Uh, so, we have, uh, we're dividing. So, 10 to the minus 5 divided by 10 to the minus 19. Um, that ends up giving you 10 to the 14. Just remember, you, when you divide exponents, it's negative 5 minus negative 19, so it becomes positive 14. And then, but you're still dividing it by one, the 1 1.6, so you got to divide this out there. And that gives you, I don't know, let's pull up a calculator and find out. Move over a bit, okay. So we got 10 to the 14, I'll just type it in. Let's 100, that's 5, 8, 11, 14 divided by 1.6. Okay, there's your answer. Uh, that would be, let's see, thousand million billion trillion. Okay, so 62.5 trillion or 6.25 times 10 to the 13 more protons than electrons. Okay, that'd be your answer. And again, this this uh, 10 microcoulomb charge, this is like a decent charge for like an actual like macroscopic charged thing. So that is a reasonable answer you would get for this kind of object. So, yeah, that's how that works in that sense there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it for this kind of stuff so far. Again, pretty easy just to start off with, but the, the Coulomb concept is pretty, uh, it's fundamental for the entire unit, right? When we talk about charge, it's how that's all going to work, and seeing how that comes together. Um, so, just kind of messing with charge a little bit and just seeing how it works. And, again, we'll, tomorrow we'll get into, okay, we have these charged objects, then what happens when you, you know, put them together and do all the stuff from that there. But for now, just charge by itself is good enough, is a good enough place to start. Uh, your homework question is sort of a similar calculation to what we just did for the wrap-up, but a little bit more complicated. Um, the question involves, you have, what if you had the Earth and the Moon, except the Earth was only protons and the Moon was only electrons? What would the charges be? 
right? And you have, so in that case, well, I give you the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Moon. So you have those masses and also the mass of a proton and an electron. I give you those numbers as well. So you got to figure out, okay, if the Earth was entirely protons, how many protons is it? And if the Moon was entirely electrons, how many electrons is it? And then multiplying that out to figure out what is the be the total charge in that case. It's going to be a stupidly ridiculous number. Okay, so again, I've done this before. Here, here's a, you know, here's your basic example on charge. And then all of a sudden, okay, now let's do something completely ridiculous and insane that gives you a completely crazy number. But it's part of the fun of it. So uh, we will come back to this Earth Moon example also later and actually talk about like electric forces. <laughs> and you'll find out just with that much charge what happens and um, uh, it's bad. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's not, not not a good time, but. I mean, you know, you probably would have guessed that if the moon was all electrons and the Earth was all protons, it probably would not be a good time. But anyway, yeah. So that's what we got for today. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, not too much to go on. Um, oh, also the link to the other forum, that's for the uh, random science Q&A thing that's going to be on Friday. So be sure to submit stuff to that. Um, I'll let you know uh, a bit in advance when that's specifically going to happen on Friday. Um, I'm currently leaning to one but we'll figure it out i'll let you know beforehand so yeah and i'll give you a link to all that stuff let me do that so yeah that's what we got for now again pretty easy so far tomorrow there's gonna tomorrow though we're gonna really get into the meat of things and so tomorrow might be a bit definitely gonna be longer and might have a bit more stuff to worry about